Well, praise the Lord. I want to welcome everybody here this morning. Welcome everybody by internet. Praise God. Um, I want to thank everybody that participated and helped us out on Trunk or Treat. We had a great turnout. Boy, I tell you, Angie made me want to play the games. The games. Woo! I looked over there. I was, I was too busy po shoveling popcorn. I kept hearing them. Woo! Do it again! Do it again! Great job. Appreciate you. Appreciate everybody else that helped participate, man, cleaned up after, you know. Some churches don't believe you need to do things with that, but, you know, like I said, we worship God, not Satan. Uh, we don't dress up like warlocks and widgets, witches or so on, uh, but we participate to show people that God can have fun, too. And he does. Um, because... He's God. It's fun to be in God. Well, I asked the Lord about some things and prayed about some things, of all, like I always do. I got a deep message that God has gave, gave me. I don't think some of you are not ready, but some of you are. So if you're not ready for it, just seek God. You got to get ready for it because you can't just be a believer and go through life successfully. I'm going to say it again. You just can't be a believer in God thinking you're just going to go through life successfully. You got to be a believer, a doer, a knower so that you can be successful in this life. Because even devils believe. So before we get into the message, I want to go ahead and uh, ask two guys to come up because the church is going to recognize them as helpers in the kingdom of God. And I'm going to ask Brother Josh to come up and Brother Tony Glover to come up. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you the positions that the Lord has applied and gave them to help. It's between them and God how they want to stay and run the position God entrusted them with. But God says, I want you to ordain these two men next week. We'll do that Sunday for being in the ministry. Brother Josh is going to be assistant pastor that's going to help me Brother Tony, praise God, we found a youth pastor. <laughs> and also, he could put youth pastor, assistant pastor uh, to help, because one man can't do this. And we got to have people that sold out, dedicated. And when I said dedicated, not rulers, not dictators but dedicate it to God to do what God says to do when it's inconvenient and you sit at home, other people sit at home. That's the difference. You have to be committed to yourselves and to God to do the position when God calls you in these offices. And do you know, you yourselves sitting in the pews is called by God. You're not built to sit in a pew. This is why God told me not to build a congregation. Build disciples. I want disciples. For the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. And I'm going to teach on that eventually. Because it, 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 it means something. Every person that is born in God has a job to do. Not to sit there and make a church service doing a religious duty and going back your old ways thinking life is going to just live all happy and go lucky. That's a deception from the enemy. You got to be trained and built to be men and women of the most high. Amen. Thank y'all, gentlemen. We're going to ordain y'all next Sunday. Hmm? Yeah, go ahead. Here, take this right here so we can hear over the internet. Man. Sorry about that. It's all right. Yeah, good morning, church, and everybody listening. Um, I want to say this. Um, um, I worked at the juvenile camp for five years before I went to the prison 
uh, five years ago, and I was amazed at some of the things that I found out that was going on in these young people's lives. So I believe the primary age group that we're targeting is 12 to 18. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this, if I may, um, if the bylaws here permits, I would say maybe a little younger or a little older, give or take. Um, we're not going to turn anybody oh, away. Yes, correct. Um, so if you got children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, anybody you know, maybe just a friend or neighbor, and um, they can go to another church, but like we're going to have services on Friday nights starting in February, at least the first Friday night of the month to, mm -hmm. to, to start, to right, to see how it goes. And I tell you what, I'm not going to just preach to those teenagers. I'm going to listen to them. I'm going to hear what they got to say. And we're going to try to guide them because there is a sons and daughters movement. There is Hallelujah. an outpouring of the Holy Spirit Amen. that's coming on these generations coming up. And they need training. I needed training. Pastor needed training at some point. They're going to need training. Amen. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to raise them up to be the generations to, to stand before kings and princes throughout the world. Amen. So, Praise Amen. the Lord. Bless you. Bless you. And that's the truth. God's ready for your sons and daughters to prophesy. And then last days, that's, a, that's what he said, I pour out my spirit upon your sons and daughters. And this generation, that, this young generation that God is calling out is going to prophesy. You're going to see teenagers preaching the gospel with fire of the Holy Ghost. Not a doing a religious duty. And this is why God is starting to stir up some of the Things and, and God Himself, I said, I will shake whatever can be shaken, will be shaken. Meaning, He's going to stir up some stuff. He's going to put people who have an opportunity to come to Him and make their own choices. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. As I was saying, I'm going to talk to you today, and I know I won't most likely finish because it's deep teaching, and I barely everything I teach is barely scratched the surface. But I've been getting downloads from the Lord about demonic beings and demonic things. Understand, just going to church does not make you a 100% victor. Knowing who's inside of you makes you a victor instead of a victim. You get the picture language here. What I'm trying to tell you by just saying I'm a child of God doesn't mean that you can cast out devils. You have to be built in Christ, in, in him. The hope of glory has to use your body as a living sacrifice to do the will of the Father and let him do his will. Because there is demonic beings not only in our schools and in our churches, in our families, but also in your governments. People say, just like I hear people say, I don't vote or do anything because it don't concern me. This is the deception from the devil. That is deception because what they pass comes down to the people. So if they pass demonic spirits down, it's coming towards the people. So don't sit there and fool yourselves that it don't concern you. Because Jesus said in his word, the government runs on my shoulders. He has got all authority. That's why he's the head and his rule, and I stay up under his rule, I receive the benefits of the goodness of the kingdom of God. Amen. So whoever's ruling, governments, mayors, pastors, doesn't mean, and I don't like to say pastors rule, they're supposed to be an overseer. They ain't no ruler. But there's a lot of them here, especially in America. My God, if I ain't got the mic, I ain't coming. That's because you're looking at yourselves and building your own kingdom and not God's. That's another message. But as the Lord is pulling me towards demonic beings, demonic things, God can save you in any state you're in. But he needs men and women to let him rise up in him to know when there's a demonic being and do the will of the Father. Because people is hurting outside, folks. Some of you are hurting. 
Some of you have been tormented by demons and you're not even knowing it. Demonic beings. You think it sometimes all the time just because you can't sleep is because your hormones. Some of it could be. But there's a demonic being everywhere seeking to whom he may devour. Always. He don't care how much you know scripture. He don't care how many times you go to church. He's trying his deceptions to get you, to get me. And if you don't know God's word and know who God is, you can get caught up in it. Understand this. We have a spirit, soul, and body. And I did the study and I pray, if I'm wrong, I'll come back and tell you. But I asked God about this. Demonic beings, someone that is demon-possessed, still have ability to come to God. He might possess your body. Possess your thoughts, possess your actions, but everybody's made by the, with a spirit, soul, and body. Your soul is where your emotions and your feelings and your will is, where your soul is. Your spirit is made in the image of God, Him all Himself, because God is a spirit. So God wants to connect your soul to your spirit so you can be connected to Jesus. But when something possesses you and you got demonic beings, you read in the Bible in different accounts where God cast out devils. Do you know the book of John don't even record any devil casting out? Yep. Only three gospels records that. Some people brings them to them. Some people brings their daughters and their sons. To, even remember the story about I asked your disciples to cast out this demon to my son, and they couldn't do it. So if you can, Jesus, help us. And Jesus said, he said, if I can. With God, anything is possible. See, he knew who he was. The disciples were trying to cast him out with their own power, with their own mental thinking how a devil is. That's why God says you cannot do nothing without me. You may think you got up today and breathed today on your own. You got here because the Lord Jesus God Christ has gave you the strength and the life and the breath to get here. That's the difference. We get, and I'm going to teach us, this, we're getting way, way, way up down ahead, but the Lord, I'm just following the Holy Spirit. He know how to bring it all into, together. But you get into to a place to where you get immune of everyday life. And you think this is part of life. It's just the way it is. No, it's not. That's why God says you be more than a conqueror. That's all he says more than a conqueror. Because God is trying to get the people to understand you created more than what you're living today. You were created to be men and women of the most high, kings and priests. The devil has no authority over you. Some people don't even want to get healed. And I got proof on that down the road on this message. People says, why God ain't healing the sick? Why? Because most people don't want it. Because if he healed you with a sound mind in the body, you may have to go get a job, woman. Might have to do something. Why? Because you're so used to taking what is easy way out with the flesh 
And I really don't want to go to work. I mean, if I can make $5 a day sitting at the house, somebody's a fool to go work for $5. And that's how the demonic being, believe it or not, operates. If I can get you to think it's the best way is this way, you won't see no kind of victory, no kind of power of God. And don't sit there and say, I want to be. Woo, here we go. If you do, God says, whosoever believe to, and, that, and speak to this mountain, it shall obey and be happen. I want to be healed. I want to be saved. I want to be set free. I want all the good benefits that my father died for. Well, then why is your right eye the way it is? Hold on, honey. Don't worry. God is timing when he shows it. I'm going to be in a ministry preaching one day, and the supernatural may happen right in front of your eyes. Yeah. That used to hinder me. If you can't preach about healing. You can't, God says, son, I'm, you better do what I tell you to do. I got a purpose. Hallelujah. So I know. And the same way is with a demonic being. There's people that has been held by demonic beings and not even realizing it. And if you want to put a title on this, God can set you free. God can set you free of any, any type of Sin and any type of problem, God can set you free. Where your soul man is, where that will is, understand, as I said, when the devil possess a body, they still have that soul. And that deep down soul, God put a, a want to of knowing who he is in your soul man. That's why people turn to cults. Satanism, other religions, because everybody is built to have, there's something big, I'm built to be bigger than what I am. I'm built to be, whether you realize or not, more than a conqueror. So this, if the demonic being can possess your minds to make you think, that's why the main battle is in your mind. That you are not smart enough, or you're not capable enough, or you are so bad person God never used you this way. That's demonic. But yet you know down deep inside, God know God can help me and set me free. And that connection, that's how why God draws you to him. Even though that's why when you get in this message... That's why the devil came to Jesus. Now, God could call all demonic beings right now and they come to him. But a demonic being is not coming to Jesus by himself. Because he's already know he's defeated. He already know who won every case. But you and me can bring him to Jesus. Because when he possess you, you go buy a television. You possess it. You, you, you get it. You buy it, put it on a charge card. <laughs> I hope you don't do it like you, I used to. Put it on a charge card and pay it for 14 years and never pay it off. <laughs> but when you possess the television set, it doesn't make it any other different product. It's a TV. You possess it. But it's a hard, bad example because it's TV ain't got a spirit. Except what comes through it. Off the airways. But it's the same way as me and you. When the demonic being possess your body doesn't mean you don't have no control to come to Jesus. Because deep down inside <clears throat> slobber and all you'll come to Jesus. And then God needs men and women to know what to do and do what God said. And I always say it's not by my power nor by my might, but by the 
uh, spirit of the living God. God takes this body and he does his work. Some of us to see somebody come in here slobbering and kicking and raging, we're thinking, well, hey, we need to kick them out, man. They all up here ruling. No, somebody by the Spirit of God needs to take authority of it. Sit down in that chair. God's fixing to set you free. Because they came here trying to get free. But God has not too many men and women that is prepared to receive the demonic. And there's a lot of them that's out there that's so hurting and so much pain and so much trouble, so much confusion that it's spreading from generation to generation to generation to on the streets, to in your jails, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because God has not got men and women who is willing to let him build them to the place. Oh, that's why that song, ain't that something how people says, let me hear that song, and then God brings it in. That's why that song, you hear it. But you really know what you're talking about, going to the enemy's camp. God is ready for men and women to go to the enemy on an offenses instead of sitting up there with a defensive. Because people is ready to be set free. There's some demonic people that's sitting on the streets, can't even find a way to, they'll walk. But they'll walk to the churches and the churches won't even let them in because, oh, they, they must be on high on something, man. Yeah, they got demons. And you and me have not let God learn us to know what it is. Yet, God is training me. I'm not where I need to be, but I'm heading to where I'm going. God is preparing me to go to the enemy's camps. Because God's teaching me some of them. Some, that's why you pray for some in wheelchairs. They don't get up. They made a God immune to be in a wheelchair. They're immune to it. Until we get tired and fed up, we'll stay where we're at. In the three Gospels that explains where we're going, Matthew, Mark, and Luke records this. As I said, John don't. And John don't have anywhere Jesus set anybody free demonically. Do the study. Come back. Correct me if I'm wrong. And only in Matthew that it records two demonic men. The other two Gospels don't talk about it. But in the Gospel of Matthew 8, verses 28 through 32, and we're going to look at all three of them. As I said, it's a good teaching, but yet at the end and during and even today, God's going to start setting some people free. When Jesus arrived on the other side of the lake in the region of what? Gathering, huh? <laughs> Y'all just like I am. Y'all have trouble to talk about it. Gatherings. Two men who were possessed by demons met him. Understand, you read the scriptures before that, you'll find out there was a storm that came. You'll find out that Jesus was asleep. A lot of teaching is, like I said, I could go back and teach, teach, teach. God's word is so big. Well, these demonic beings was trying to keep Jesus from getting to the other side. So they scared the disciples. Hey, wake up, master, wake up, we're going to drown. And he spoke to the wind. See, people always use hurricane, says, it's of God. God does not came to kill and destroy or steal. He came to give you life and life and more abundantly. 
Satan can whirlwind the atmosphere and make these storms. Now, God could make a storm. But if he just makes the storm and he rebuked himself, what's the devil for? But he said, peace, be still to the atmosphere. And you read those scriptures before that, it stopped. And the disciple says, who is this? That even the winds of the, of the air obey. Because God knew Jesus, say, may I say, God and Jesus all in one, knew what their destiny was to set the human race free. And that man, them two men, soul, their will still had that, I've got to go to this Jesus. Because the demons already knew Jesus. So when somebody comes in, <laughs> instead of you sitting up there with a cross, I rebuke you. Like your movies. Because he wants you to get afraid. He works on fear. If I can make you scared of me, I can, I can start ruling you. Ain't that something how the government try to fear you with COVID? You're going to die. You better do this. And people will run and slop up the pig slop to live instead of listen what God says. Right. Well, ain't they supposed to be good for us? Let God help you and, and let God be your governor, your mayor, your president. Let God be all instead of this some. And you can learn from all this stuff, that even the food you eat, they try to kill you. Just because the government approved it don't mean it's good to eat. Whew. Glory be the name of the living God. Father, do your will through this vessel. Father, have your way on this teaching. Father, move in this world like you never moved before, Master. And who was possessed by demons met him. They came out of the tombs. The, ref, the definition of tombs of death, poverty, lack, sickness. Where were so violent that no one could go through that area. Was so violent that they attack you. And no one was full of God to walk through that area. Understand, because Jesus just came. He's fixing to have the Spirit fill you now. That's why greater he in you and he than he is in the world. And greater works you shall do, because I go to the Father and I'm in you. They begin screaming at him. Why are you interfering with us? Ain't that something? Now, let me, tell, let me ask you, look at the picture. Look at the picture. He, they know Jesus. They, already, they know Jesus more than you Christians do. They call yourself a child of God. Because if you, we really knew Jesus, because I'm growing to that place, if we knew you would be superpower people. Wu kana bashita la why are you interfering with us, son of God? Look at, have you come here to torment us before God? I'm fixing to start running around here. Before God's appointed time? They already know they defeated. But they take me and you like a feather in the wind. We go all over the place.
God's appointed time when he comes and put the end of evil once and for all in his second coming. But he didn't say, my people that is down here to live in hell and let devils torment you and let sickness kill you. Even though you on this earth today, Before God, they already knew. So they wouldn't have came to Jesus to Jesus on their own unless Jesus told his demons, come to me. Now they're going to obey him regardless. If he say, I want to see Lucifer today. Boom. How you doing, Mr. Lucifer? That soul of them two men had that will. Uh, that, that no devil can possess. The devil cannot possess your will unless you allow it to be. Because that's how God sets you free. Because if you have a made up mind in your will, I ain't coming to Jesus, you shall die with the demonic being and go to hell. Some people has made their mind up that I am not going to heaven. And when I say I ain't, I ain't. Me and, he, and, and, and what it is is a, a camouflage of a demon saying you're going to be all right because you're on this earth right now. But once the last breath comes around, you're going to be in trouble. Because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all, the God who shouted, said there will be no other God before him comes on the scene and then you are separated from God eternally forever and ever. Do you know why you're walking around with the devils? You're not separated from God yet. Oh, I had no... I told you it's going to be deep. Because that will, you know... Because God works on the soul. Come here. He speaks you into the spirit. Come here. Ah! Come here. Instead of us all staying up there with a cross. Stay away. Stay away. The Lord rebuke you. Stay away. You got to walk in the spirit, and God is a spirit. He's inside of you. He can see demonic beings where you can't. And He needs men and women to understand the spirit realm because that's where the victory starts, and then it comes into the natural or the battle. 30. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding in the distance. So the demons begged. Even them got an if. <laughs> if you cast us out, send us into that herd of pigs. Y'all got to be, y'all got to get in the spirit. Y'all got to see you and Jesus standing up. All right. Go. He didn't sit there. Ow! Oh! Woo! Get out! Get out! All right, go. Just command, Jesus commanded them. So the demons came out of the men and entered the pigs. And the whole herd plunged down in the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. Hmm. Why did the pigs rage? Why did the pigs just went crazy? A lot of teaching in that. That's the animal kingdom. They don't have souls. And they go berserk. I know people say, my puppy dog in heaven. Yeah, your puppy dog could be in heaven. There's animals in heaven. 
There's horses for sure. I ain't getting on that teaching yet. We got to stay focused on demonic. God's fixing to set some people free and grow people up to understand demonic ways. Because people, God's going to bring people in here full of devils. And he's got to have, oh, Lord, I felt that. Somebody said, well, the pastor already knows, so let him take care of it. Well, guess what? They come into your house, too. And the pastor don't come to your house every day. You got to know how to cast them out at your house. You got to know to get them off your children. You got to know who you serve. Let's look at the other count, Mark 5, verses 1 through 13. So they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of what? Man, y'all going to have to start speaking. Because I ain't going to go. No. When Jesus climbed out of the boat, now it says a man. A man possessed by an evil spirit came out from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the burial graves and could no longer be restrained, even with chain, with a chain. Whenever he was put into chains and shackles, as he often was, meaning you, you try to do what you can to think you can control this devil on your own. I know a little scripture. I know a little prayers. I know how to do this. I'm going to chain you up. But there's demonic beings that is so strong, you got to know who you are in Christ. You got to let Christ rise up in you. And as often, he snapped the chains from his wrist and smashed the shackles. No one was strong enough to subdue him. No one knew how Jesus worked. No one knew what the gospel preached. Day and night, he wandered among the barrel graves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. Misery. Do you know he was trying to get out? Help? While Christians sit in their comfort for pool pews and they make sure the devil ain't messing with my baby. And we all one and all cozy. Hallelujah. Not knowing that the devil's coming to your house whether you cozy or not. The time when you cozy is the time you need to be learning. Because it's coming. No one can live this life without trouble. Many of the afflictions of the righteous. Many problems comes around. But God's delivered them from them all. Now, we can make it harder, but God will deliver me. Because we're disobedient with our own selfishness. And when Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him. That soul man saw him. The will, where the will and emotions is at, saw him. If, if them demonic beings would have said, turn away, turn away. That soul, that will. Remember I taught on the will. Where there's a will, there's a way. When you make up your minds what you want, you go get it. A lock is for an innocent person. When some a demonic being wants to come in that house, and if you ain't got it protected by Jesus Christ, he'll come up in there. And strip you naked. Well, I'll shoot him. He ain't worried about no gun. I'm going to teach on that. Because when he come in there to get in your house and you, boom, he laid out. That demonic being flew from that thing and went right over there and could enter somebody right there in the house. Boom. I'll take the gun from you. 
See, you got to understand this stuff. You cannot kill the demonic spirits without Jesus Christ. That's why I keep telling you by the Spirit of God, nuclear weapons don't protect you. You could go out there and test it before the whole world and show them how they blowed up the island. A demonic being says, mm, I can use that. I want you to blow it up. While you sit around, hey, ain't nobody going to attack us. I can act like a dog. Woof, woof. Lit like a cat. And setting you up for destruction. That's why I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, y'all better pray Monday night. You better been praying, but you better do what God tells you to do Monday night and do what God says and not what your flesh says. Because this election is coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, if we don't turn back to God, you can say what you want to say. But you better listen to the Spirit of God. It goes the wrong way. Why to America? Shouldn't be no competition. Because mankind still have not woke up. And you shall have your desires. But God's people are going to be all right. See, that's why I ain't got to worry about it. which way is it going to go? Which way is it going to go? I'm going to do the right thing. You the one who got the problem if you don't know what, what you're doing. I'm going to be okay. You the one who got the problem. Because God's going to protect me, my household. Because I know I'm doing what God tells me to do. That got quiet. God says, oh, some people says, oh, Lord, who should I vote for? You should already know who you're going to vote for. God's been telling you and telling you and telling you, and you're trying to still live in that soulless, fleshly attitude because there's nothing free. Nothing. This gospel wouldn't even free. Jesus paid the ultimate price. Blood shed, whipped. For you to sit there and gripe and complain why he ain't doing nothing. There's nothing free. And don't you think that somebody give you something that it was just a gift. Somewhere down the line, something had to die and pay for it. If it ain't nothing but the tree that made the paper. Y'all, hello, if we get there, something has to die. Pay for it. And when Jesus was still some distance away, the man saw him and what? Ran to meet him and bowed low before him. He didn't even tell the devil to bow. They knew they had to bow. This is why if me and you will understand about how to be with God, the less the devil stays away. Doesn't mean he won't come back. Because he's going to try to find another different attack. But God says, I know. Scripture says, when Jesus said, I know all his attacks. I know how he works. So let me live inside of him, Tim, and I'll show you. How, uh, uh, there's a devil trying to come in there, Tim. Watch it. I know all his attacks. His schemes, the Bible says. Not me, but God inside of me. That's why I got to let him have my body, my mind, my ears, and my eyes. See, we try to let God have some of the soul and some of the spirit. No, always God said, either I'm all or none. And with a, ooh, a scary scream, he screamed, why are you interfering with me? Jesus, son of the most high. Wow. <laughs> you think Jesus was sitting up there saying, I didn't know his thing screamed like that. Son of the most high. Look where he, they, how they, listen to this, how they even prayed. In the name of God. 
I beg you. Ooh, but that, see, that's some, that's your shouting words right there. Y'all better listen how the devil is begging your God. Why you sit there and beg God, will you please help me? Please help me. Turn it. Let God show who's inside of you. Beg you. Don't torment me. <laughs> That's why God laughs. Laughs at the devil. You got a, a scripture, I forget where it's at, in the book of Revelation, where we'll stand and look at the little imp, and we will say, you mean to tell me that's what ruled mankind? That's what made all the trouble in the world? That? All right. <laughs> Glory to God. You and me, you make him bigger than what he is. Greater is he is in me now than he's in the world. And y'all can sit here and wait around for the clouds or the big supernatural sun or the earthquake, whatever y'all want. I know what's inside of me. And I'm going to my future. And I'm going to my destiny that I was born through my mother's womb where God created me for. I'm heading that way because he's inside of me and I'm inside of him and we're going. Glory to be the name of the living God. Hmm. This is why God has have sent men and women soon to be here to be ready to keep God's order because God's fixing to send me out. Because he said, I got you prepared for some of this now and I'm going to send you out for here and there right now because I'm going to teach you some more. And for Jesus has already said to the spirit, come out of the man, you evil spirit. Nine, then Jesus demanded. Now, there's a key. See, that's why you got to study with Jesus. You got to study and read the Bible with Jesus. Why did he then commanded him to come out? Then he was demanded. Then Jesus demanded what is your name? He already knew the devil's supposed to have been out. But he's trying to tell Tim, now, Tim, what is your name? I done set you free. The man was supposed to say, I am Tim. Yes, right. The son of God, my brother. No, y'all didn't. Y'all can't get the picture. That's what I said. Some of you ain't ready for this. You're not seeing the picture. He didn't have to ask him, what is your name, devil? What's your name, devil? What's your name? He already knew who he was. He's trying to make the man say, you have been set free. Now, who are you in me? I'm Timothy J. Willingham, a man and a brother of the Most High. That's right. Get up out of that ground. Take your authority and send him back to hell we he came. I, 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 that's why it's a long teaching. What is your name, he replied. Let's go back to eight. Some of y'all have missed it. Send it back to eight. For Jesus had already said to the spirit, come out of the man, you evil spirit. Already out if you wanted him to out. But you still had to hold on a little bit. Got the picture now? Because your will was still, I think I was still supposed to be like this. <sighs> that soul man. Because I am got down in the scripture, it's going to be another good teaching. I got proof that he won't even cast it out if he ain't willing enough to get it out. Oh, yeah. Hmm? Then Jesus demanded, what is your name? And he replied, my name is Legion because there are many of us inside this man. Jesus says, my God, butch. Butch, that's your name, butch. And I done commanded them spirits already to leave you, and you're still holding on to them, butch. I'm going to go to another level for you. Go to 10. Then the evil spirits, because now he said he's fixed to go to another level, right? 
and it's, man, we try to help him. Then the evil spirits begged him again and again not to send them to the distant place, meaning to hell. Don't send them out into the darkness. They begging because they already been there. And I, <laughs> I can open a can of worms with this, but I'm going to show you. I'm just stick where the Lord's got me now. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby. Send us into those pigs, the spirits bay. Now, God could have sent him to go back to hell and never return again. Send us those spirits and let us enter them. Because understand, if you do the teaching, what made Satan so jealous to, to get kicked out of heaven, he wanted to have a body. He's an angelic being. He has no soul. He has no body. That's why he hates humankind. He needs a body. I want a body. That's why he took God in the courtroom and told him, who is this? What is man that is coming? What is he? I'm the one that sings out prophecy above the earth. And did you know how, that's why I told on this a long time ago. Your God is so beautiful and merciful and in love. He could have destroyed the man right there. The angelic being, may I say. Right there. Shut your mouth. Poof. But he even let them, oh, you don't want to understand who I am and I'm the one that created you? Make your own kingdom. Kick him out of heaven. And that's their kingdom. And they want all they can people to come to their kingdom. But they can't even do nothing without somebody giving them a body to do it. I need somebody to pick up the gun. I need somebody to push the drugs in. I need somebody. That's why he said he's wrong to and fro. Seeking to whom he made a devour. Who will let me in? And I will steal and I will kill and I will destroy. That's why you can't compromise with the devil. We'll sit there and give a conversation with him. If he was really God, you wouldn't be going through what you're going through. Eek. I go through because of my ignorance, number one. And number two, I decide to do it. Own up to it. There ain't no devil can make you do nothing. The devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. No, honey. You had a place where the devil enticed you, and you liked it, and you committed it. Thirteen. So Jesus gave them the permission. The evil spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs. And in the entire herd, about 2,000, some of his translation says 6,000. Two to 6,000 demonic beings was in one person. May I say two? Well, yes, Lord. Two of them could have had 12,000 because there was two men. Remember the first? You don't hear nothing about the other man, do you? Entire herd, and I could bring out more about what happened to him. He knew he had sense enough to be free and went on out of here. But the ones wanted to stay there and play with devils. That's another teaching. Plunged down the st a steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. Let's look at Luke 8, verses 26. Another account. So we ain't even getting into the, the nitty gritty yet. So they arrive in the region of, here you go, y'all should know it by now. Gadarenes, all right, girl, you go. You, you, hey, Lord going to make you the interpreter. Across the lake of Galilee. As Jesus was climbing out of the boat, a man who was possessed by demons came out to meet him. For a long time he had been homeless 
naked, living in the tombs outside the town. And as soon as he saw Jesus, he, what, screamed and fell down in front of him. He ran to him. Why are you interfering with me, Jesus? Son of the Most High God. See, understand. Some people are scared of the devil. As long as he don't mess with me, I won't mess with him. Well, honey, he's just another camouflage on that because he's going to come mess with you whether you mess with him or not. <laughs> Please, I beg you, don't torment me. 29. For Jesus has already commanded the evil spirit to come out of him. Already. This spirit have often taken control of the man, even when he was placed under guard and put in chains and shackles, he simply broke them and rushed out into the wilderness, completely under the demon's power. How can you say, Tim, that the devil don't have no power and that was power? Because human being is created in the image of God and God has power. And if he can get a body to let me have that in the most power, I can do stuff too. Now you see the picture? And if I can get into somebody, a president or uh, kings, uh, I can rule and reign over this earth as God. That's why the Antichrist is coming. And that will be fulfilled whether you want it to or not. But God said, and it ain't the time for it right now. It's time for harvest. And he's trying to push his time quickly. Because if he can push into time without the churches, the men and women of God be led by God and tell the people correctly, he can have all of us while we're ain't no devil whew, and lost. Because some of us be thinking we're going to heaven, we're busting hell wide open. We, I call it pity patting. We call the excuse, I'm only human. That's the logo of the enemy. You're only human. God understand. Go ahead and commit adultery. You're just a man. Get you some. That's a lie from hell. Same with a woman. You're not just human. You're created in the image of God Almighty. The devil don't want you to know who you are and what you was created for. Greatness, power, and might in Christ. Jesus the man demanded, what is your name? See, he, you read the scriptures that he cast him out already. So it sounds like the scriptures contradict itself. He didn't obey the first time. God don't have to beg nothing. What he speaks, it happens. The problem is me and you. Now he said, what is your name? He's trying to get Tim to wake up. I done set you free. Who are you? And I just, oh, I'm just so bad. I've done so much wrong. Yeah. Legion, he replied, for he was filled with many demons. The demons kept begging Jesus not to send them into the bottomless pit. There happened to be a large herd of pigs fighting on a hillside, and the demons begged him, let them enter into the pigs. Let us enter the pigs. So Jesus gave him the permission. Wow. Why didn't he just go ahead and put them back to hell? Because God made you in the image of you. Of him. He gives you your free will. God is not a dictator. He does not make you bow down to him until it's time to. And when that time comes, you done made your decision.
Right now, it's a free game. You're free. You're free. You want to get well? You can get well. You're free to decide. You want to get healed? You want to be delivered? You're free. You, wanna, you want wisdom? You have it. You, what do you want? That's what God is doing today. What is it? You have the free will to come as much and learn as much as me if you want to go. You can walk with me as long and as high as you want to go. What do you want? You respond, you got to get, once you get saved, you got to get a relationship. You got to you love God more than anything in this world then your soul, man, will start connecting with your spirit, man. And God is a spirit connected. And then you and him can walk this earth being as one as Jesus is one in the Father and work and breathe and be conquerors more than a conquerors. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Woo, that's why revivals, that's why I'm, it's going to start in America. And like I said, most of y'all have seen Jonathan Kahn, man. I've I, I seen that this past Saturday. Well, it was yesterday I showed my family about the prophecy Jonathan Kahn God used him for. It's great. Some of us are scared of God. I'm not scared of the Heavenly Father except come on in here, clean out what you want to clean Make me who I'm supposed to be. Tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where I'm right. Tell me, tell me, tell me, because I live for you and you alone. Why some of us don't want Jesus to come visit your houses? You done made decisions to sleep with some devils and don't want to get loose from it. I still want to do the flesh over here, but I want to worship God over there. It ain't happening. Eventually, one or the other is going to overtake you. And possess you. And I don't want no devils possessing me. I don't want no devils possessing my family. And see, I got grown children. Got grandchildren. But I tell you, they got to make their own decisions. If they don't believe, I just don't believe it. Honey, buddy, sir, ma'am, who? I don't care if you're my son, daughters, daughter-in-law. Doesn't matter. You got to make the decision. But daddy's going to heaven. That is going to Jesus. That is going to walk this earth with God and be more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. But if you're not, you're a child, oh, here we go. And you certainly, and I know, and listen to the Spirit of God. I know there's some rebellious children. I know there's some hard-headed children won't listen to their mamas and daddies. But let me tell you by the Spirit of God, there's nothing more powerful than God himself. If they're up under your roof, you tell them what they got to do. No exceptions. No exceptions. Well, you were just a mean daddy, a mean, a no, ma'am, I wasn't. I wouldn't pet no devils. You going to church, get in the car, I ain't going nowhere. You going to church, get in the car, well, I'm going to call the popo. Well, call the popo. I will dial 911. Get in that car. Shut your mouth. Shut up. She told about condola by head to the bachi. That devil make you feel sorry for him. You he'll take you to the slaughter. Why you feeling sorry? Don't cast us out, please, Mama, please, Daddy, please, Grandma, please, Mimi, please, Papa, please. There's a difference of being kind and knowing. Says time. There's no exceptions. It's time to go. And always people have been saying, oh, this word generation is gone crazy, gone berserk, because me and you didn't teach the kids like they're supposed to be taught. The church didn't do it. Grandpas and mamas and everybody didn't do what God said. And that's why we are in the situation we are in. 
<laughs> Ooh, backlash. Son, I got you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Father. Then the demons came out of the man and entered to the pigs, and the entire herd plunged down and slipped steep hills into the lake and drowned. So I set all three of those cases to set the stage. And we'll be going into what it stands for next week. I got another bottle of water. Bottle of water? Well, I just checked with the Lord to say, I'll keep you here all day. But God says, son, they're choking. They got to chew on a little while. They got to chew. You can't eat a piece of steak when it's tough and swallow it all of a sudden. You always think God's words lay me on. <laughs> Sometimes he makes you reach for it. He makes you chew on it a while. He makes you look. Come on and get you something. Come to him, Tim. Please come to me, Jesus. Please come to me. Oh, I can't go. Please come to me. I'm standing here. Come to me. Told you the dream many times. He just stood out there with his hand out to me. The devil was sitting over there begging me. Come here, come here. Whoa, come here. Whoa, showing me things. Come here, come here, come here. He was begging me to come here. Jesus just stood there. Because he's wanting people that wants him freely. He don't want people there but it's because you're waiting on me to give you a gift. You know, when you gay raise a child up, oh yeah, here we go. Christmas coming, ain't it? Ooh, we can use this and Santa Claus won't bring you nothing. You better act right. Brush your teeth. Going to get backlash, Lord. Go ahead, son. Oh, but you only could be good in this few months because Santa Claus comes. I'm going to be good. Santa Claus comes. We use Jesus like Santa Claus. He ain't no auto. Go ahead, parents. People say, well, he ain't no artificial person. I told my kids, Jesus will tell Santa Claus what to bring. I did. I brought him up. Santa Claus is real. And we know who the Santa Claus is. Grandparents, members, daddies, and brothers and sisters and everybody else. Oh, that white magic is getting upset. But that's the problem. People preach against Halloween. Saying about what you put in, don't do this and don't do that, but put Christmas trees up in the pulpit. Oh, you want to get technical? Y'all want to get down to the nitty gritty? Y'all want to get down? Same thing with Easter. See, you be you be just you just be going through motions. Oh, this is all right, and that's all right, and that's all right. No, 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 no. It started from scripture, and then man twisted it and made it as a, an image. Even with Christmas, Christmas, Jesus is a grown man. He ain't no baby, no manger. And the first thing they do is look at the baby in the manger. He's a king now. A full-fledged king. Do we all play your baby pictures when you're 85 years old? Look at there. They show you how you is. I understand where you're coming from. And I'm not speaking against the manger all to, all about it, up against it. It started as the baby came. But he's a king now. And we need to start worshiping him as a king. He's a full-fledged, grown man. And let me tell you something else. He is not a wimp. He got whipped, and the Bible said he didn't say a word. And if you'll do the study on how he got whipped with the cattails, when the Romans used to use, it used to be like uh, hooks to where it stabs you in the back or where in the face or wherever you at, and it snatch it and rip bone, flesh, muscle, and all out. And the Bible said he didn't say a word. No, we can't let one of them little old fire ants bite us on a pinky toe and we cussing. Saying all kinds of words. 
It took a, he had to have a relationship with God, didn't he? The father. Because <laughs> he's promised me greatness. That's the same way it is with us down here on this earth. The devil might throw the fiery darts and we take the, field, uh, the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation and all the word of God, the sword. Oh, my God. <laughs> and we ain't going to say a word to God said. And when he did say it, when he said, it is finished. That's when he opened his mouth, meaning, no more, Satan. You won't touch me. And you, oh, oh now God just gave me this revelation. And you will not touch my servants. I just got the revelation to that. God said, you will not touch me. And you will not touch my beloved servants, my people. For them who made their minds up. Got the picture language now? Woo! This is why I ain't going to hell for nobody. And people say, well, you better not say nothing. They'll be coming to get you put in jail. God is inside of me. He's the one that's speaking, not me. Because if it was me speaking, I'd be petting y'all on them. It'd be all right. Just hope and pray you make it to heaven, son. And I'm praying myself. I hope to be there. I am built more than that. I know where I'm going, and I know what God already gave me through the blood and the power of Jesus Christ. Satan has no right, no authority over me and anything that pertains to me. Well, now, when you get grown, I'm still going to pray for you. And I'm going to still believe God, but I'm going to tell you what thus saith the Lord says. You better get up under the shelter. You better get your own families. Like I do my own kids. You better get your own families up under it. Because after Papa or somebody goes to heaven, what you going to do? Somebody got to take the authority that's built inside of them and flee the family on. Praise God. Stand to your feet. And we can, what we can learn from this, you will get it next week. <laughs> Might get some of it Wednesday. Yes, Lord, you will. Huh? Okay. We'll, ta we'll start talking about it some more Wednesday. Because we're just getting into this with this demonic devil, but yet the soul, the will of the man that God implanted from the day you was born the will to come to the highest power. <sighs> I need help. Okay, I will. Do you know people, when they make movies and scary movies, do you know they know this? You see, see you, you sit back and watch these movies, think it's uh, friction and... <laughs> They get it from here. Then they twist it because the devil read the Bible that he walked with God. And he twists it, put his little tap on it. I'm for you. Vote me in. And I'll give you $45,000 to all Americans. My God, some of you already be voting for it. Bless your hearts. I believe it with all my heart. Listen to the Spirit of God. God has given America one more chance. This is it. This is it. And if we don't obey God and do the right thing, and people say, man, you telling people, I ain't telling you nothing. I'm telling you about a demonic being that's in this earth that's trying to govern you, thinking everything's going to be all right, and it's not. You ain't seen hell yet. God doesn't show me what will happen if it goes the wrong way. And it lifts up to the people. That's why we pray. When we pray, we pray for even the, with electronics of the machines. Because do you know, listen to the Spirit of God. Listen. Do you know there's people already giving codes out for people to hack the machines? Done been caught in jail today in Colorado. 
while you sit there and sleep and slumber thinking an NFL football game is going to save you. Your baby's doing all right now, but when he or she's intensive care, who are you going to cry out to? When the doctor says, hey, I ain't got, hey, they're dead. They, 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 it's just a matter of time. What you going to do about it? I'm not going to wait till I'm in that situation because when you're in that situation, you don't even know how to pray now. You're just doing nothing but begging. God, please, please help me. Heal that baby. Heal that baby. Take my baby. Help my baby. Help, help, help. You got to already know. What's inside of you to fix it and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. See the difference? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Can y'all play a little song back there? A little slow one. And anybody has to go, you can go. Ain't nobody going to say nothing about you. But God is ready for mankind to be free. To set, be set free. And quit just being a believer by itself. I believe in Jesus, but oh God, I don't want no devils coming around me. You were created to go to the enemy's camp. Because <laughs> some people need help. It's time for your bottles to be snatched out and learn to take a sippy cup. And if you've been coming to this church long enough, you should be already drinking kegs oh I heard that oh you got a keg up in here we drink well see that's the problem that's the problem your faith ain't in the right stuff call it does that keg does put a band-aid with it and you got to come sober it's still there baby when you put morphine in you trying to get all of that stuff to make you forget about your past you were so bad when you put that in you baby you're gonna have to put some more in you because it's right there again the only way to get free from it and free from it completely as Jesus did for that man. You had that wheel, just that little wheel to come to Jesus and he'll take it out. And he will not allow it to go back in there unless you allow it. Now you could have called back and said, I want to feel this way. Because I got proof how we get immune. All in this message is how we get immune with the devil. It's all in this message. That's why I say People says he's staying there for three hours. I can see why preachers preach for three hours. To get it all out, to make sense, you got to tell it all. Because you walk out here today, you're like, whoo, that was a good message. Come in, then tomorrow, next week, you say, well, the devil says, uh, uh, you don't need to go in there. You don't got a little bit. Just stay where you're at. Well, I'll watch it over the internet. That's right. That's what it is over the internet. Before you know it, you won't even watch it over the internet. Why? Because the most wanted is on. Or, what's the singing one? What's that one? America's my idol. Good gracious, who's going to sing today? And it ain't nothing wrong watching some of that stuff. But it's time to put Jesus first. If you're going to be, if you're walking around here, the world's looking at you, you say you Jesus? Man, I, 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 I act the way y'all act. I don't see, I got must have Jesus. I got Jesus. I cuss you out just like you cuss me out. I got Jesus. Glory to God. Mm-hmm. I talk about my brothers. I talk about my neighbors. Now, you do the same thing. So I must got Jesus. God says, be ye separate. For my people is a peculiar people. A people that's, that's brought out to be separate from the world system. They're supposed to come to you for wisdom. They're supposed to come to you for knowledge because you serve the all-knowledge God. He knows how to make a living. He knows how to treat people right. He knows. So let him live through me and I, I treat you right. And I can help you to say, well, I did it now. Watch this. Watch this tax. Watch this hidden cost, whatever it may be. Kitarabashandabo. Anybody that wants prayer, come up. It's your opportunity. 
And let me tell you something. Y'all better get out of that timidness. Because God ain't timid. And he don't give you the spirit of timid. But a power, love, and a sound mind. Huh? Yeah, we done told that. Yeah, we already, that's okay. Yeah, we done announced that already. First of the service. Understand. Are you ready? Are you ready to go to the next step? Because I'm telling you, I ain't worried about having the crowd around me. Because I know I was built for greatness. I've built more than a beat of more than a conqueror. I don't care what people say about me. I don't care what I'm meaning by care. I'm not going to do nothing to make you hate me. Because God don't do nothing to make you hate him. But when the truth hurts, you just get mad at the truth. He didn't do it as it hurt uh, to make you mad at him. You get it to learn. So God taught this boy and he spiritually whooped this boy because he loved me so much. Because I can tell you that scripture spared a, a spare the rod, spoil the child. That's spiritually, physically, and mentally, brothers and sisters, because I done been there. Anybody else? You know what you came for? Do you really know what you came for? You don't you don't talk to God. Because that ain't the man you talking to. You told God. Now you have to believe it and not go back. That's the difference. You don't have to go back. For thus saith the Lord, I have freed you. I have ordained you for me, saith God. Now you, you, are the one to either allow it to be back into you or allow me to keep you free, saith the Lord. And the only way that you can allow me to be in you is to study me. Read my word. Talk to me, saith God. Listen to me instead of the flesh. And you shall see me work. You shall see me. Yes, Lord. Get your leg. God says he already provided a way. There's no excuses why you haven't got a leg. Oh, I want God to grow me out one. He can grow you out one. But you got to take what you have and work on it. Because he healed ten leopards. And only one came back to thank him. Only one. And what would you do if I grow your leg out, saith the Lord? Will you come to me? Will you run for me? Will you do for me? So start with the little things and then I will make you faithful over much. Proceed. Proceed. No excuses, no more. Find the right fit, saith God. You shall get up out of this chair and start making ways to move, making ways to do, making, stop it, saith God, for the excuses. I provided a way, do it, proceed it, go after it, saith God. You shall walk. You will. So go and get fit. And you shall walk. Don't keep saying I can. God will fit it. He'll keep working with it. You got to. Yes, Lord, I'm obeying God. Because you have been pampered too long. God said, it's time for you to be the man I called you to be. I, I got men that has no arms and no legs in providing for their family, saith the Lord. In doing, there's no excuse for one leg, saith God. It's 
So now God says, it is in your hands. I have done said it. I done spoke it into a motion. It's for you to go get it. You can go back to the devils. You can go back to the feel sorry for yourself. That is your choice, saith the Lord. But I have done freed you. I have done made a way. You shall walk and not receive that chair no more. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I can't even remember your name. I'm so anointed right here. Help me. Randy. You have the ability now. God said, I'll give you seven months. And that's plenty of time. Which it can be just only seven days. Saith God. When I freed Egypt, they can, it was only a three-day trip. But with their complaining and whining and feeling sorry for themselves and, and whining like babies, they had to roam around the mountain for 40 years. You have been roaming too long, saith God. You can come out of that and go to the promised land and have a free life. Walking with your grandchildren, walking with your wife, doing things in the house, doing things, driving cars. Listen to the Spirit of God. You can. Don't say that. You just said right there, uh, you can. You get immune to it. You can, saith the Lord. I don't know. Picture language. That's the freedom. You got to go get it. And you go get it. It's called a determination. A man complained to God because the angels disturbed the waters in the pool of Salaam. And they always had an excuse. Every time I get down there, there's people in front of me beat me to it to cripple. But you know what I would have done? I would have laid right by that river. I wouldn't have crawled back up there to my same spot. I would have laid right there because if you're going to come there, when the angels come to stir, to make the waters, you're going to crawl over me. Because I'm going to be first to jump in the pool. Get the picture language? You have it. Take it. I like to see it. I like to see it in seven days. God said something about seven months. I like to see it in seven days. You'll feel like a new man. I'm telling you. You got to want it, Randy. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. You a man. Quit going back while well, I shouldn't have done it. Quit going back. That's dead and over. God never forgave you for things. Move on, my brother. Move forward. You more than a conqueror. And you too, same way. God, did you go to that men's meeting? You she did. I knew God. Wasn't it? Well, son, that's the reason God has put drawed you there. He wants you to be one of the men in the last days. The last days to receive what God wants to do for his people. He needs laborers of the field. The harvest has been right. But he ain't got many laborers. And if they do get the laborers, they all want to do what they want to do instead of what God wants to do. They want to harvest one way and God want to harvest the other way. He need true laborers of the field. Men and women that sold to him only. As the Bible said, give me your body as a living sacrifice. Let me live inside of you. That's the difference for the day and age. That's why God is stirring up even Christians. It's time for us to stop acting like people and act like children of God. In the name of Jesus, you know what he said to you, Lord? So be it. I'm agreeing with him. In Jesus' mighty name, no more excuses. You've been coming here for a long time. No more. Do the will of the Father. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, so be it. He will give you your heart desire. What he has already planted in you shall flourish as you surrender more to more to him, saith the Lord.
Mm, Jesus name. Anybody else? And this is it. Come here, sweet pea. There's anointing on you. And what you have told the Lord, it shall happen. For you have looking at your dad's body, saith God. But yea, I tell you, through your dad's body, this is me, saith the Lord, speaking to my personal daughter. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God that delivered thee from all thy troubles. I am the God that's teaching thee. I am the God that you serve. I am that I am, saith the Lord. And at this hour and at this day, as I speak through your dad's body, I speak to you, my daughter. You shall have the beautiful experience of labor as you thought you would never have. You will be a, a person that I, you will be able to testify and tell people how wonderful and loving to have a child it will be so perfect. It's going to be known that it is from me, saith the Lord. And yea, yea, saith the Lord, I heard all your prayers. I know what you have said many, many nights before. I have heard that you said, I want to be able to do this or be able to do that. I say unto you, you will. I will provide and I will show you great and mighty things even with the one you have already called my daughter, Emma. I have not started a work to not complete it with perfection. It shall come to fruition, saith the Lord. In Jesus' name. And you shall be a laborer, not only for a child, you shall be a laborer for me, saith the Lord. I have a plan for you, and only you, saith God. For the Lord has prayed. And what the Lord prays shall be answered. And I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I have prayed for my people to become my men and women. I have prayed that my people, which are called by my name, will turn from their wicked ways. And pray and seek my face. And I will bless your land. And I will protect your land. And I will be your God. And I, you will be my people, saith the Lord. Woo. There's two people on the internet that said, I wish you would call my name. Joy. Joy, your name is called Joy for a reason. Because I want to bring joy to your household. For I am the God that has us spoken. And yes, the second one, yes, I hear you. Stephen, I know Stephen when he was stoned. And a lot of people have stoned you with their words and their attitudes and their mispromotions. But I tell you at this hour through my servant, you shall not die but live. I will promote you. I will uphold you. And I will reveal you to you, me, saith the Lord. Amen. The Lord, Father, I, I don't want to rush you. 
keta bokone shitara bahande de peke. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be in your presence. Thank you so much for teaching us your word and showing us, Father God, that we can be more than a conqueror. Thank you so much, Master, that you are preparing your people to receive the anointing and the Holy Spirit like the world have never seen before. Thank you so much, Father God, for giving us the ability to have the opportunity through your Son's blood, Jesus Christ, to receive the goodness of the Father, to receive the goodness of Jesus. Thank you so much, Master. Now I pray for everyone from the sound of my voice and everyone here that that will brand this word into their minds, into their hearts and their spirits and give them a burning desire to seek your face and your will and your thoughts and your ways. And I pray this prayer, Father, as your servant, as your child, because God, even you have change the def definition of a servant we are one in you we just your people we can be and rule and reign like you not above you and not below you we can rule right beside you because you said that we can be right beside you we can walk with you and you will show us great and mighty things that we not know of we thank you so much for you and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We thank you so much. And I pray and I send forth God's only angels, the holy angels, to do its work in this election. Guard those machines. Father, every person that wants to cheat, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Woe unto you for those that is in the offices and try to afflict my decision. I tell you this hour through my servant. If you try, you shall fall dead at the same time you do it. I will pull my spirit away from you, saith the Lord. And there's no life without me. Woe unto you. Let the people choose. And I say unto my people, choose right. Choose right. In Jesus' name, go forth, be in peace. Amen.